Yeah, so I'm playing head of Almalexi. As Hermaeus Mora, the one who knows foretold, we meet again, Proxy. Many diverse twists of fate have led us to this nebulous... Mm, too complicated. <laughs> nebulous. I come with a gift. A purpose, dark and heavy. An opportunity to fulfill the contract you signed. Purpose? What purpose? We are bound together by a common danger. Enemies ah. of Hermaeus Mora threaten his realm of oblivion, and in so doing pose a threat to the mortal world as well. Therefore Mora sent me to meet you here, and secure your cooperation. So basically, uh, Apocrypha is place for the greatest secrets in this multiverse, so the thing is that if the Apocrypha falls, or something cataclysmic happens to the that realm, it might like wake up, wake up the Godhead. So that's like deep deep explanation why it's bad idea to get let let uh, something to happen to realm of Hermes more. Only a mortal proxy can deal with the threat and save both Apocrypha and Nern. The fates of both realms are linked, and you are the key to preserving reality. Without you, everything unravels. Yeah. Except, Help avert exactly, yeah. this disaster, and Mora will reward you. The one who knows instructed me to give you this. A condensate of planar potentialities. It... Uh, you will not understand. <laughs> it is ink. Take it to the Ulvenos system, <laughs> okay. a ruin near the city. Pour the ink into the water, and your path will become clear. Okay, so I wonder if if she's going to tell tell us something different if we are playing like the Arcanist. I am Laramil, sometimes called the Wise, although that is not a sobriquet I care for. I seek to comprehend the emergent truths elicited by the... Um, never mind that. I am a scholar. A century ago, I struck a bargain with Hermaeus Mora. I do not worship him, if that is your question. The Prince of Knowledge is an ally and patron. Mora provides me with access to rare and esoteric lore. In return, I undertake various tasks for him. Have you never heard of the Daedric Prince of Forbidden Knowledge? The Lord of Fate. The Riddle Unsolvable. Hmm. Hermaeus Mora knows everything. He is the wisest of the Daedra. Every secret and all knowledge finds its way to Apocrypha in time. I am astonished how little the mortals of our tiny world comprehend. Apocrypha is the realm of Hermaeus Mora. His home and seat of power. One of the countless realms that drift through Oblivion. Please, do not ask me about Oblivion. What's up, Oblivion? <laughs> One or more of Hermaeus Mora's rival princes, although they have yet to reveal themselves. They work through agents, such as whoever sought the glyphics when we first met. A spider lurks at the center of this web. I am sure of it. I wonder if it's going to be nocturnal but nocturnal was all already like main antagonist in, in one of the DLCs so I, I wonder but then again there's lots of uh, Daedric uh, princes yes and no these are the same forces that hired the Dusksaber mercenaries and colluded with Drawless Atherin to seize the Emerald Glyphic ah, since you put a stop to that they have changed tactics, but they have not abandoned their scheme. Classic, classic place. First scene in um, arena, but this is like first first time we see it. It was more dead by the mod players before, but the more wind, uh, but. Prepare Necrom Kwama to craft. Kwama workers. These, these are Kwama. They appear to be domesticated. We are 
hatred markings. And big, big uh, <laughs> bridge. I wonder how many how many influences they have been taking from the mods Necrom discovered. So here, here we can al already see this. This is actually actually a holy place. But we are not going to steal anything. Just watching. Okay. Take care of your mount, and it will take care of you. Yeah, I haven't bothered to the, uh, learn the writing with this character. This used to be like role-playing character. Basically, it's pro probably going to be like lots of crypts under underneath. Let's see what's here. Trading plaza. <laughs> Final rest furnishings. <laughs> Mage guild is here. And crafting stations are all over there. So we shrine. Merchant have have already been like taken. Because why not? Buy Terry. So yeah, they are prepared. Hey, buy buy it's it is binary. Okay. This seems really interesting. <laughs> Maybe we find out what this is later. So binary isn't probably isn't about making mummies but rather rather actually actually something else finding Daedric or spirits of the ancestors or something okay these are these are crafting grids not going to like take super super long time to Very spacey crafting crafting place. This might be like the best place, but doesn't bother. Tell yeah, lots of lots of players here, so it, it must be like. Convince any ships to get current passage to Gorn. Gorn is known from the book called uh, Poison Song. And talking about it, heresy, so <laughs> I want to talk about it. And Craig, mine. Yeah, we, we know that Gorn was here. Uh, yeah, sure. I wonder if we can, it's like place we are going to go and like slay 6,000 members. I wonder if we are going to see Gorn. I bet the stable masters love taking care of that one. You there! You look like a capable forager. I need some help. Can we talk? Thank the ancestors you stopped. 
Right. Well, <clears throat> I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I need to collect ingredients for a medicinal tincture, and I simply don't have time. I need someone to help. Ah, yes. I am Balva Bemis, retainer to Oathman Lero Rawless of House Telvani. Lero suffers from beastly headaches, and I'm making a tincture to address his malady. I need some hard-to-attain ingredients. If you aid me, I'll pay you well. Um, so he's his retainer of this Oathman, which is like fourth level member of the of the Telvanni. There's, there's not too many Oathmans in Telvanni. I actually made a like <laughs> spreadsheet about House Telvanni, and, and they had like s small issues with the, with the with the group in Morrowind. So Oathman were like they weren't so numerous as in other houses, but it, it was like really weird. I need the musk gland of a bull netch. I spotted some netch remains around Kemmel Z. Also a plant called the volcanic stinkhorn from near Salen Mora. And lastly, fungal blooms from a dead shroom beetle. The best ones skitter around Tel Drello. So Once you collect the ingredients, I'll wow. make the necessary preparations at my workstation okay. in Old Isra. You know, getting the viscosity right and all. Well, they're vital to the recipe. I don't want to bore you with the details, but the stinkhorn provides a binding catalyst, while the bullnetch musk gland so, balances the humors. They're very important. Yes, definitely. They provide a nutty, hay-like flavor. Covers up the bitterness of the brew, you see. He's a very demanding individual, like even at the best of times. Commands with an iron fist, you know. And when these headaches strike, he is positively tyrannical. Yes, yes. I think it will address his malady fully. I mean, I... the efficiency set so let's see so this is stamina health and magica while you have a living companion so this is set for the people who actually use companions reduce the cooldown of your abilities by 50% wow but you do not have a living companion reduce everything so this sounds like PvE set I mean I mean we have been like waiting harder uh, DLC since Cracklorn which was like water ink to the water chosen into my unrelenting gaze. All other outcomes are now excluded. From this moment, fate's ever-branching tree begins to grow again. And with it, new possibilities emerge. All that and more mortal. I see all that is was and will ever be and in so doing 
I saw hidden rivals that threaten Apocrypha and all of reality. They must not succeed. The time has come to honor your agreement. I am the Golden Eye of Fate and the Keeper of Whispers. I have foretold that a mortal is needed to preserve reality. You are that mortal, and we signed a contract that binds us for the duration of this threat. Apocrypha is in danger. Now you must act. Let Laramil guide you. She can perceive the threads of fate and lead you to the three tasks that will reveal my hidden adversaries. Meet her in the Necrom Bindery in the mortal city of the same name. Your journey to preserve reality begins there. I have alerted Laramil to three specific threads of fate that converge in a place known as the Telvani Peninsula. She will guide you to these locations so you can unmask my hidden adversaries. Go. Do you know so little, mortal? Apocrypha is my domain. A plane of oblivion I have shaped to my need. And this plane, the mortal realm, some refer to it as Nern. As for the connection, just know that if Apocrypha falls, Nern will cease to exist. The scholars and mystics of your world call me a Daedric Prince. What you see is only an aspect of my true self. For the mortal mind cannot contain the whole of me. This form suffices. Your mind must remain intact for you to be of use to fate. Precious little. They are shadows that vanish under my scrutiny. Obscure figures that somehow hide from my gaze. It is disconcerting. Never have I been so blind. Every possible fate unfolds before me. They all lead to an event I thought erased from chance eons ago. If this course isn't altered, Apocrypha falls, reality unravels, and Nern is destroyed. Yeah, like, like I thought. This enemy eludes me, but you are my secret advantage. That is the reason fate chose you. Your instinctual ability to succeed no matter the obstacles placed before you. No matter the odds. Follow the threads I selected for Liramil. See where they lead. That is the key to saving both our realm. That is why I agreed to bind myself to you with a power a contract. I cannot act against you or your interests so long as you adhere to your part of the bargain. Our enemies have no such constraints. So, proceed with caution. Fate takes many paths, mortal. Find Laramel in Necro and choose wisely. So, meet literally in the device. Let's look look around. Second time we visit here. Adventure is wanted. Apply here. Tribunal Temple Call of the High Ordinator. Now time. Tribunal Temple seems competent adventurers to enact the will of the living gods. Unique opportunities abound 
for you and your allies. Well, there's missions, rewards for the outstanding performance. As well. High ordinate Borun in Necrom. So, who's high ordinate? Right here. Okay, here. Yep. Yeah, he's 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 high ordinator. So as you can see, he's having like white golden armor, like I have. But I have like dif different kind of setup. This is my own own design, basically. Your bearing speaks well of you. I've come to the city of tombs in search of the brave. The tribunal temple has need of you. There's been lots of lots of arguments, but the, what the high ordinators are actually doing during this era, we we know what they are doing in a, in a more wind like third era, but second era is different. Yes, I'm overseeing the temple's efforts in the peninsula and the dreadlands of Apocrypha. It falls to my subordinates, Ordinator Tendasia, Ordinator Talina, and Ordinator Nellen, to assign the available work to those that are capable and willing. Yeah, so so he's overseeing the temple effort. So overseer, high ordinate. This, this is something I actually actually like, had a like long fight. What what are high ordinators? It is the prudent warrior that trusts in the guidance of the three, yet still seeks to know the face of their challenges. What do you need to know? Ordinator Talina focuses on infiltration and reconnaissance. She makes use of single operatives to perform missions for the temple where larger forces might be unwieldy. She's dedicated to the three and encourages others to be devout as well. Ordinator Nellen oversees the logistics of larger operations. The temple relies on him to manage assignments that require groups of operatives working together. He's very aware that heroism often costs and pays accordingly. Tendasia walks a narrow and perilous path but sees much that I do not. The temple values her mastery of hidden matters. Uh, matters adjacent to our holy mandate. Okay. I take such flirtations with heresy seriously, but her results are undeniable. Aha, uh -huh, okay, so interesting. Excellent. If you prefer to work alone, talk to Ordinator Talina. If you prefer to work as part of a team, find Ordinator Nellen. May the three guide your path. I serve the Tribunal Temple. The labor I perform is done in service to the living gods, not personal gain. I don't expect my fervency to be shared by all, nor do I expect others to take up arms for the temple freely. But I do so gladly. Looks like the, you've yet these, to these are a once again bearing. The using the use older someone like you, you will armor. be well rewarded which is weird because th that was like armor they used in a base game and it's it's damn ugly uh, but they had like ordinator armor, armor. Why, why can't they use like new armor there is a place in apocrypha called fathom's drift a graveyard of ships wrecked by hermaeus mora we think that some of our order's lost vessels are among those wrecks. Our divinations in this world have proved fruitless. Comb the shores of Fathom's Drift and bring back any ship manifest you find. We can at least determine what ships the Master of the Tides of Fate has taken. We will make the trip worth your while. Do you hesitate? There will be no renegotiating, I am afraid. I'd advise getting back to the job at hand. We are holy gods and warrior priests. Dedicated to serving the Tribunal Temple and the living gods worshipped therein. Here in Necrom, we tend to our flock in the Telvani Peninsula and keep a wary eye on the portals to Apocrypha. It is the realm ruled by Hermaeus Mora, and as such is a threat to the living gods and to us. In these lands, though, the veil between our plane and his is thin and easily pierced. We know of several ways to reach Apocrypha. 
Hermaeus Mora is no friend of the Dark Elves, but we have sent agents into the Prince of Fate's domain, hoping to uncover hidden knowledge. We cannot go ourselves, so we employ paid agents, like you, to discover what lies beyond the Veil. Fathom's Drift is a ship's graveyard in Apocrypha. I've heard that some of the wrecks are floating in air, impaled on rock spires or listing noiselessly on silent seas. It's unnerving from the reports I've heard. It's a place beyond the power of our living gods. It is filled with the spirits of drowned sailors and lost souls. It is a domain of the damned. But do not worry. <laughs> Your reward will be proportionate to the dangers of the past. Okay. That depends entirely on what the High Ordinator deems necessary. But there are more jobs than capable hands. If you survive, then I'm sure we will continue to have work for you. Put your skills to use for the ordinators of the Telvani Peninsula. You call us the Chainmaker, ships exotic creatures into the region, and pits them against those willing to pay to fight them. He often lets his beast loose to drum up interest. We want to put Corlys out of business and track his network of suppliers. So for seal, the light of knowledge, provided our order with clockwork oddities we call mystic trackers. We need someone to defeat Corlys and place these trackers on his wagons to uncover his contact. The sooner you get a move on, the sooner you... You're observant, my friend. We keep an eye on the Telvani Peninsula, and now Apocrypha as well for the temple. It's more than anyone can handle alone. We've many dangerous, well-paying jobs available for teams of talented adventurers like yourself. True servants of the temple take all threats to the three and their people seriously, including the Daedric Lord of Secrets. But our need is your gain, my friend. We pay well for others to take care of these issues. Corlys the Chainmaker is a showman who runs a fighting club of sorts. He imports rare and dangerous creatures. Would-be warriors pay him to fight them? No, but he sometimes turns his creatures loose on the countryside to drum up business. We want him stopped, and we want to know who his suppliers are. I was told to expect you, and here you are. Congratulations, Traveler. You've been tended by the Gardener of Men. Plucked for a special task. Hermaeus Mora requires your help in reclaiming a portion of his realm from his enemies. Yeah, she, she knows a lot. Hermaeus Mora's enemies assail Apocrypha, specifically Bastion Nimic, a stronghold where dangerous names of power are stored. The Golden Storage Eye for the needs names. someone to rout these enemies and the herald that leads them. The reward will be substantial. Bastion Nimic is inaccessible, except by a few ancient gates. The Herald Seekers guard the way in. If you kill these Seekers and take their Daedric Icor, you can use it to activate the gate and get inside. I'll mark your map with the location of the Thonic Gate Land, yeah, as well as with the Seekers Flock. Okay. Mora's foes control these okay, Seekers. Okay, so this is why we Find need them, uh, Seekers. Kill them and take their Icor. Once you have enough, you can open the gate and enter the... No, but we must sometimes forge strange alliances. Okay, so see, Our people have a long history Hermes with the Daedra, you'll recall. I have an understanding with Mora. We help each other from time to time. Especially when his affairs spill over into our world. Let's just say they choose not to examine my methods too closely. The Lord of Secrets provides me with eyes and ears in many places. She, that she's can just be too very useful, useful for the in my work. I repay that favor when he asks for help, such as now. They serve the Daedric Princes, Vermina and Periite. I know that dangerous champions lead the attack, okay. but the real threat is the master of the Seeker Heralds. It has subverted Bastion Vermina and Periite. Periodic, it's actually being must be get try the to stop you. dead princess. Yes. That's why Hermaeus Mora requires outside help to deal with this threat. He can't rely on his own Daedra in Bastion Nimic. You can expect no mercy from Mora's former servants. Give them none in return. Eradicate them all. <laughs> really interesting. Oh, how many? 
Yeah, that's going to be like... Okay, that's an apple group. Interesting that we are already sent to the apple group right, right off from the gate. So we, we get to explore like two, two, two places. O oh, of course, uh, Telvani Peninsula is, uh, is like this is rather smallish because uh, other part of the DLC is that apocryphal right here. Seems like there's lots of details. So in interesting that we don't, we already get to the apocryphal. So that begs the guess the question what's going to be like the next next step. was pretty interesting. Cobwebs. Findery. Okay, so I, I can get to the Welcome to my safe house, Proxy. Meeting Hermaeus Mora represents a rare honor. The one who knows materializes in a delimited projection. Uh, he chooses to manifest before few mortals. The threads upon which reality dangles are precarious indeed. What did Mora impart to you? And so I shall. The one who knows traced three crucial events to this area. Investigate each, and he believes we can expose the conspirators moving against Apocrypha. We may even stop them before the ultimate threat takes shape. I do not know. I was only presented with what was required to bring you to the right place at the right moment. You must determine why fate needs you in each location, then take the appropriate action. Many possible futures branch from every mortal choice. As of our choices, it changes the outcome. Therefore, Hermaeus Mora tells us only what he must. As fate's chosen, the rest is up to you. The threads of fate lead to three locations in this region. The Necropolis of Necrum, the Old Tower of Telrendis, and the Town of Alavalis. I shall open a portal to each, investigate them, and return here to the Necrom Bindery when you are done. An old bookbinder's shop. A bookbinder. Our temporary base of operations in this region. I secured it so we could travel to and from Apocrypha without causing undue panic. I doubt Necrom's authorities would approve of portals to an oblivion realm in their city. In addition to the three to take you to the locations you must investigate, I summoned two gateways to Apocrypha. One leads to the Endless Library, a place of books as numberless as the stars. This, this is the the other to Chroma Skyrim. Incognito, where lost fates linger. Lost fates linger, okay. Only if you desire to do so. The threads of fate Hermaeus Mora asks you to investigate begin here in the Telvani Peninsula. Where they shall lead us, I cannot say. But with the threat directed at Apocrypha, I thought quick access was prudent. A reasonable and prudent request. I shall provide what details I can, but I know little more than you do. Local history and politics are not my usual area of study. Which location would you like to know more about? Necrom serves as a center for the ancient Dunma practice of ancestor worship. A strange custom. The monks of the necropolis, called the Keepers of the Dead, tend the catacombs beneath the city. They guide the faithful, 
in venerating their forebears. Tel Rendis is one of the many mushroom towers that dot this land. They usually serve as domiciles of Telvani wizards who wield formidable magic. But this tower is abandoned. Interesting. Fate dictates that when you go there, I shall accompany you. Olivalis is a minor settlement whose only claim to fame is its malachite quarry, a glass mine, as the Dunma refer to it. That thread of fate vibrates with particular intensity. What you shall find there, I cannot say, but I urge caution, Proxy. Your choice must be your own, Proxy. Hermaeus Mora was clear about that. I can't Every new can me out. Cranny. What am I going to do? Please, I have no one else I can turn to. I need help. I worked as a servant in the towers of Teldreleth. Nathan, the son of Mistress Dreleth, is being kept prisoner there. At least, I think he must be. Nathan and I had plans to leave Teldreleth together. Someone must have found out because the day we planned to leave, I was dismissed from my position. Mistress Dreloth, or Sethiel, I suppose, pushed me out without a chance to see Nathan. If she's holding him against his will, he'll be in the isolation tower. The only access is through the lab in the caverns that run underneath. There's a key in the top floor of the main tower. Please, can you help me? I'll pay for your assistance. Thank the eight you came along. I had no idea how I would do this on my own. I know Sethiel would just throw me out again, but Nathan is my whole world. I can't possibly leave Teldreloth without him. The first step is finding that key. Certainly. You know, it's been so long since I spoke to another outsider. I didn't think I'd miss it so much. I say this with love, but Nathan's not a fighter. He's lived a sheltered life, and Sethiel is a very skilled mage. But he wouldn't fight his mother anyway. Until he met me, he seemed content with heeding Sethiel's every word. I wish I knew. If she were any other Telvanni master, I guess she didn't want her son settling for some lowborn servant girl. But nothing like that ever seemed to matter to Sethiel. She was far more focused on her research than her rank anyway. From what I understand, she's trying to cure the Nahatan flu. Oh. It took the life of her husband many years ago, when Nathan was just a baby. Oh, okay. I'm sure that's why she's so protective of her son, but it's no way to let him live. I heard Sethiel used to keep test subjects in the just isolation some, some tower. Many, many years ago. If she's keeping him anywhere, I imagine it has to be there. He spends most well, of his ten, time ten, on the balcony two, of the main tower. But he hasn't been out there at all since I left. Would it matter? Nathan deserves to make his own choices, regardless of his mother's wishes. And if she really felt that way, why wouldn't she just make her feelings known instead of throwing me out? I wasn't trying to steal him from her. I used to ask myself that question every day. It all happened so fast. Ah, Cropsford. I had a big family in Cropsford. We fled east from Cyrodiil when the Three Banners War began. By the time I made it here, I'd lost everyone. I was on my own. She gave me lodging and fair wages, too. She was kind to me, in her way. I used to think it was out of some goodness of her heart that she took me in. After she dismissed me, I was left wondering if she even has a heart. Very little, actually. It's not what she said, rather... While packing, I found a note in my belongings, signed by Nathan, full of hurtful things. Things I know he would never say to me. I'm certain of it. I know Nathan's handwriting, and more than that, I know his heart. He'd never say such cruel things to me. And the fact that Cecile made up those lies hurts me even more. As in how we met? It's a bit of a silly story. I have a habit of whistling while I work, songs from back home to keep my mind busy. One day, when I was working in the garden, I heard it. Chords of Chim El Adabal coming from the balcony above me. He'd never even heard it before. He learned it on the lute just from listening to me. He would play, and I began to sing again, 
It was like Nathan gave me my voice back. And I could think of home again in a way that felt like healing. Nathan started dropping notes for me in the garden. He folded them so beautifully to look like flowers. He'd make up excuses to send for me. We'd stay up all night talking or reading. It took a long time for either of us to admit our feelings. I did. I'd suggested that Sathiel was being a little overprotective of him. We were almost arguing about it when I just admitted that I'd fallen in love with him. But I didn't know if I wanted to stay at Tel Dreloth forever like Sathiel. Only recently. That was Nathan's idea. After losing my family, I sought safety and found it in Tel Dreloth. But over time, we both realized life is too short. Too precious to spend it stuck in just one place. We decided we wanted to see the world. Softy glowing. There's the main tower, and you can see the isolation tower to the north there. They're not like the towers back home, but they're beautiful in their own way. There's going to be like sneaking missions. I need to like make a make a load of alchemy potions. Find the laboratory key. That was that was uh, history or elaboration about Telavani. Good. Nobody's noticed us so far. I wonder what's this. This looks like a board game, basically. I wonder how you play it. So this is Telvani Mushroom Tower. Okay. laboratory key. Here's, here's the stairs up. This is actually, actually more confusing <laughs> than, than the previous Telvani Towers. I, I, I suppose that happens when you actually let uh, mushroom take take over your 
chest. Like. The key is in that chest. It's a spare for when the researchers misplace theirs. A bridge version. Aiva Plus on hyvä, hyvä, hyvä kirja. Nyt on todellinen huippuhelmi kuuntelussa, kuinka olla piittamatta paskaakaan. Mark Manson, kerro mulle, miten toi onnistuu. But this is actually improved version of the... Hesestress and Dunbar. Okay, this this is a bridge version. Interesting, not not, not much new thing, the things, but yeah, think at the chest. Got it. Let's speak for a moment. All right, we have the key. This is going better than I thought it would, and it's strange. Everything looks so different in here without the wards. It all feels so empty. Wards? What wards? Nathan's protective wards. You know, Sothiel's magic barriers that kept Nathan's half of the tower in isolation. I couldn't cross them at all. They certainly made tidying up a bit of a trial. I mentioned the wards before. Sorry. Uh, okay. I guess I've been here so long it's become normal to me. Sothiel said the outside world would kill Nathan. And she was working on a cure. But as far as I know, she and her husband were trying to cure the Nahatan flu. He died years ago. When Nathan was just a baby, from the disease they were trying to cure. Sathiel must be sheltering Nathan for fear of losing him, too. She's or doing it something out of love. else. That I can understand. But that doesn't make it right. We'll take the portal pad to the cellar. Then the key will get us into the labs. From there, it's just making our way through the caverns to the isolation tower. As long as we don't cross Sathiel, the others will be too busy to stop us. Good question. I've never known her to be particularly combative, but if Nathan's wards were any indication, she does wield very powerful magic. Which she may use to... escort us out. Nathan's well-being is a family affair, and the researchers are far more focused on their work. They're tasked with observing their subjects for the slightest changes, so they won't keep their eyes on us for long, anyway. This goes better and better. Test subjects for her experiments. Ah. Animals, as far as I know. Some of the experiments are rather grisly. I kept away from the lab for that exact reason. I've heard some of these Telvani use slaves for such things. But Sathiel's not like that. Castle, sure. No, and that's exactly what worries me. She's tested no cures on him because there's nothing to cure. He's not sick. She just wants control. Poor Nathan. His mother loves him, but it's almost like she's the one with the sickness. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen it this empty down here. Where is everyone? Pinche, thank the eight you're all right. <sighs> Daisha, stranger, you shouldn't be here. <sighs> Too dangerous. <sighs> Go no further. The thing is that Argonians should be like really super resistant against every kind of disease. 
and Nahati flew past Dar- uh, Argonian children. Barely, <laughs> barely exposed natural immunity. Yeah, he, he's telling that. I will live. Uh, heard shouting, <laughs> then screaming. Everyone came running. Big mistake. <coughs> Subject spores. Too strong. <coughs> Wanted to escape. Mistress Dreloth. She coaxed him back to isolation. <coughs> Delman. Too strong. Stronger than I've ever seen. Delman. Delman. Mistress Dreloth's greatest experiment. Uh, the cure. The affliction. Delman did this. <coughs> Trouble breathing. Barely survived. The other researchers. Not so lucky. <coughs> Too late for them. Go no further. You could be killed. I'm glad Tunche is all right, but he's just given us more questions than answers. I know he's one of her most trusted assistants, but if this Delman is one of Sathil's experiments, how does Tunche not blame her for what happened here? I know, but fetch it all. I just wish I could remember where I've heard it before. Delman, Del- No, that's just the trouble. If Nathan had said or written it, I'd probably remember it exactly. Delman. Delman. It's on the tip of my tongue. Where did Tunche say Sathil took the subject again? That must mean the isolation tower. Where Nathan is. Let's keep going. I don't know what we're going to do, but Sathil needs to be stopped. Wait, do you feel that? It's like we're being watched. I've tolerated this incursion long enough. Whoever you are, you've fallen for Dacia's fanciful tale. And now you're enabling her dangerous obsession with my son. Nathan made his feelings for Dacia perfectly Don't clear in the letter he wrote. Or was that vital picture. piece of information kept from you? So what if I did? They both do well to believe it. They can never be together, do you hear me? Never. Leave this place. Forget she all that you does sound like a bit of an obsessive type. Worse Delman. Where did you hear this name? Delman. Ah, I see. So your half-informed mind proves far more dangerous than an uninformed one. You cannot help. Leave this place, or I will do everything in my remaining power to stop you. Delman was her husband. That's right. I must have heard it from her once, long ago when she first brought me on. He died from the Nahatan flu. The thing she's trying to cure. I've never seen her like this before. I don't know. Has she gone mad? Was she always this way? If so, she's been hiding it, and I can't blame her. If she were carted off to Gorn, she'd be parted from Nathan. The thought of it probably only made okay, things so worse Gorn for her. Gorn is actually the island for mad people. If you mean to heed Sithil's words and leave, then I'll have to go on alone. Nathan is my whole world. I'm not leaving without him. Joo, se on 20 vuotta sitten, mutta siis löytyy netistä. Mä vaan etsin Googlen kuvahalua. Enter the isolation tower.
We worry. You cannot fight the danger that lies ahead. This is your last chance. Thank you. I know I wouldn't last long on my own, but I've known that for a while. Turn back. You may never leave this tower again. Stacia, stay back! I tried to escape, but she was right. My mother was right about everything. Nathan, what are you talking about? We're here to rescue you. Stay back from the ward. Mother says it's already in a weakened state due to the strength of my affliction. I, I don't recognize you, stranger. What are you doing with Daisha? Rescue? Then she really does love me? There was this note, you see. I was certain it was fake, but then I saw you and, well, I started to wonder. But I cannot leave. If you came through the caverns, you must have seen what I'm capable of. That was to you. My father, yes. The affliction my mother gave me. She named it after him. I didn't know until I tried escaping. The wards were never for my protection. They kept others safe from me. If I had left with Daisha when we planned, she'd be dead. A living cure. A symbiote that protects its host with toxic spores. I would not be alive without it, and it would not thrive without me. All these years, she really has been trying to cure me so I might live a normal life. Why did I ever doubt her? So now you know the truth. I'd kept this secret from Nathan his whole life. That he might not grow up knowing he was a monster of my own making. He might keep his will to live while I sought a cure. After all, I gave him the Nahatan flu and cured him of that too. Delmin and I were trying to save the world. A promising fungal spore sample was on its way from Black Marsh when Delmin caught the very thing we were trying to cure. And I lost him. I had to know if the spores would have saved him. And now I know. Nahatan flu was like a pandemic in the Elder Scrolls. That was like pretty, uh, no, pretty much like COVID, but fun the fantasy version of COVID, basically. Nathan came from me. I am enough of him that the fungal symbiote does not register me as a separate entity, and therefore not a threat to its host. That is when I named it, Delman Mycota, the cure, like love, that would be with us always. The truth is a poor cure for love. I did not want Daisha to share my fate of being shackled to tell Drell off by her own heartstrings. So I tried to drive her away. But since hers is a love that clearly cannot be cured, I have devised a choice for her. If Daisha is willing, I can safely inoculate her with the same spores I used on Nathan. She will share his affliction and his confinement. But they will be together. And she will want for nothing, except perhaps her freedom. Then she can make herself useful and help me find a cure. I'll hire her on again. I need someone dependable to procure rare ingredients to keep testing possible cures for Delman Mycota. Perhaps someday she can be one of my researchers. I suppose my research notes wouldn't give you the whole picture, would they? Tunche, one of my most devoted researchers, discovered it in a pool of brackish water deep within Black Marsh. Its capture and transport was quite the undertaking. When bonded inside the lungs of its host, Delman Mycota passively produces spores toxic to almost all non-fungal life, as you saw in the caverns. It seems to eradicate anything that might threaten the life of its host. 
including the Nahatan flu. It is sensitive to smoke, a herald of fire, which causes it to release reproducing spores in anticipation of finding a new host. These are the spores we would use to inoculate Daisha, if that is what she chooses. Correct. Somehow, Delman Mycota recognizes itself, and of course doesn't see itself as a threat. Argonians like Tunche are a different case, but only barely. Their natural resistance to toxins very nearly meets its match with Delman Mycota. My researchers signed on with me because of my area of study. They knew the dangers of Delman Mycota as well as its potential. All that space in the labs was necessary for safe experimentation. I regret their loss, but they knew the risks. Or, if I had time to think of a more believable lie to tell the both of them. <laughs> I knew they had been meeting for quite oh. some time. When I overheard their plans to run away together, I had to act quickly, or else risk Dacia's certain death. Of course I did. I was glad for it at first. Dacia brought Nathan happiness. If only they could have remained content being in love with the wards up between them. It was only when they doubted me that things got dangerous. And now, here we are. I've been studying Delman Mycota for over 20 years. If anyone can find a cure, it's me. I'm not about to abandon my life's most important work. There has to be something that can eradicate the fungus once it's disposed of the Nahatan flu. What does it matter if she and Nathan are able to live out their days together? I'd only prioritize curing her, but I am a researcher. I am not above recognizing the benefit of additional subjects with which to compare results. Okay. Nathan and I could yeah, finally this, this be together. This went dark. But the way to do so means becoming his mother's... experiment. But I'd be safe. Provided for. I'd get to dance and sing every day with the one I love. Some would kill for such a gentle life. Leaving for good is no option for me. My heart is Nathan's, and his is mine. If I don't give up my freedom, I can help Sathiel find a cure. I get to see the world like I always wanted. But I'd be in her service. And I'd be alone. Life offers no guarantee of love, either. But I found that, didn't I? I don't see it as giving up my freedom. I see it as a choice of how I get to show my love. But... My heart is split. If you were in my place, which would you choose? Okay, so we can we can now choose how to how this this ends. Uh, I would stay with the one I love and wait for the cure. If my freedom is the price of being with Nathan, then I'll pay it. To be with my love is better than having to wander the world alone. Thank you for keeping me safe. And helping me see the best choice, stranger. Here's your reward. So Adam and Lurker set. So this is new, new tank set. Health recovery, maximum health. Ah, oh, pretty, pretty nice. You're staying? Truly? Are you sure, Daisha? I fought this hard just to get to you, Nathan. Of course I'm staying. Finally a place to call home again. Thank you for helping me see the right decision. I think I'll take one more walk around the grounds before I join Nathan. It'll be my last moment alone for quite some time, and I want to spare some thoughts for my family. I think they'd be happy I found my true love. Daisha has chosen to make her home at Tel Dreloth. She brings Nathan a comfort I could never hope to give him. I will make sure to show her how thankful I am for that. I'll say goodbye to Nathan. His affliction doesn't affect me because of our shared blood, but I don't have the same connection with Daisha. Her spores would kill me. I'll inoculate Daisha. And return to my work. I'll have to, won't I? And Tunche will help me, as he's always done. I pay well, and the world is in no shortage of those who lost loved ones to the Nahatan flu. I don't anticipate any trouble in finding more help. I can't.
happily she's chosen to stay. How did I end up so lucky to have someone like her find me? By the three, she's going to be here. In here. With me. I've never had that before. What do I do? <laughs> I need to tidy up. Look presentable. Make sure she's going to be comfortable. So much to do. Okay. Right. So, this faster. <laughs> So this kind of Romeo and Julia story.